Okay, this is uh, Barry here with the Synergy Underground team again. Um, we're back over here in the Zen Server booth. Uh, unfortunately, some of the videos yesterday we did from here have a lot of audio and video problems, so we're going to redo a few. So we're here in the booth for Storage Delivery Services. So uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey, hi, I'm Chetan Yopadnyai. I'm a principal partner solutions manager in the virtualization and management division. Uh, what I'm showcasing over here is our Zen Server Storage Delivery Services. And the basic idea over here is to, is to show how we uh, unify storage management with our uh, Zen Server virtual machine management. And the basic uh, principle is that the server administrator who is uh, managing your virtual machine shouldn't have to keep going back to the storage administrator to ask to carve out space when the server administrator wants to create a virtual machine and provision disk for it. So what we did was, uh, as our first uh, and currently our only uh, Example we have of our storage delivery. Service so before we jump into that, let me just ask you real quick. You know, why do people care all that about this? What what would be important about having storage delivery services? So the thing is that we don't want to uh, treat uh, storage vendors as just on the bunch of disks. If uh, the storage vendor has capabilities like fast provisioning of virtual disks, snapshotting, fast snapshotting, fast cloning, in provisioning, uh, data duplication. We don't want to solve that from a Zen Server perspective, as a, and we don't want to complicate Zen Server with that. We want to keep Zen Server as thin and as uh, as simple as possible, right. and we let the storage the storage folks handle that for us. So, and and the the advantage to the customer, if they already own NetApp storage, for instance, in this case, they get to utilize that and integrate with it instead of exactly. having another management system have to do for something else. So it really allows them to leverage that investment, and obviously, NetApp's a big player. That's, that's exactly true. So, so let's see what you have here. Let's go in here. Uh, here I have a, a Zen server installed on an HP plate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a new storage. Click on new storage. And you can see a one-point click integration with NetApp. And we have you can choose NFS and iSCSI. But NFS and iSCSI, you have to go to the storage administrator and ask them to car out space for you. In NetApp, if you choose NetApp, you don't have to do that. All you need from the storage administrator is uh, the IP address. For uh, the IP address for the, the filer, so here it's one two two three four, and a username and password. I hit next, and basically this is calling into APIs that have been embedded into Zen Server. Those APIs start directly to the backend filer. Here I want to create a new storage repository in uh, in an aggregate. And an aggregate is basically a section on on the backend filer in the NetApp case, uh, where I can uh, create volumes, and volumes in NetApp uh, terms are called flex walls. And flex walls give you the ability to do fast cloning, fast snapshotting, uh, do data deduplication, and provisioning. Uh, so the storage administrator told me I have, uh, I have the space for you. Use it how you want to use it. And I choose the number of flex walls that I want. Uh, we now have a best practice guide at uh, www.citrix.com forward slash netapp. You click on more documents, and that uh, best practice guide tells you when to how many flex walls to choose and what are the appropriate uh, numbers to use when you're uh, creating your virtual machine. Uh, right here, I say I want to use thin provisioning. Uh, this filer that I have right now does not have data deduplication capabilities, but if it did, I could have said... Oh, that's impressive. Choose. It picks that up. It picks it up. It, uh, uh, it pulls the backend filer to find out what are the capabilities and brings it right up to the server administrator. I say finish, and basically what's happening right now is going to the backend and creating volume that I can create my virtual disk in, in it. Now the virtual disks are represented as single LUNs uh, within the backend filer, and again we have a LUN per virtual disk model over here, which we believe uh, leads to very quick provisioning and also helps in mapping our object model to the back end NetApp object model. So here's the new storage repository that I just created. I set that as default. You can, it shows me how many uh, gigabytes of space I have. Right now, I don't have any virtual disks in there uh, to attach to any virtual machines. So I say, well, suppose the server administrator wants to create a new virtual machine. Goes down and selects the server 2003. It's next. Let's just give it a name. Uh, here's an ISO image that basically uh, will help me install the Windows Server 2003 onto the LUNs that I create. Give it memory. And 
by default our template has chosen an 8 gigabyte virtual disk. Let me add another one, maybe a 100 gigabyte virtual disk. Say OK. Next. And these are basically our virtual interfaces for network. I don't need to change anything here. And start VM automatically is chosen by default. I said finish. And if you look here at the bottom, it's showing the status of uh, provisioning new storage for my Windows Server 2003. And right here, it's already done. It's, uh, if you go back down over here, it's configuring network interfaces. And as soon as that finishes, the virtual machine is going to be up and running and installing Windows Server 2003 on it. Excellent. And that happens in a few seconds. All right. Uh, apart from this provisioning, you can you can also go and do snapshots of our virtual machine. It shows of the virtual machine, and that happens within a snap. All right. Thank you so much.